In this screencast, we're going to talk about hybridization. Hybridization is a sort of an explanation of where we get these funny shapes. So we know that this is sort of a generic energy level diagram, sometimes referred to as a Plinko board by me, which just sort of shows that, you know, you're where the electrons are. So the lowest orbital is a 1s orbital, and then the lowest next lowest energy orbital is a 2s, followed by a 2p, 3s, 3p. And we learned this back when we were talking about electronic configurations. And this was discussion centered around when, and we have a neutral atom sort of by itself where the electrons are located. Turns out when atoms start bonding with other atoms, where the electrons start hanging out <clears throat> is in a completely different place. Well, not completely different place, but a different place. So the concept of sort of hybridization is answering the question of how do we make those weird shapes? So the tetrahedral geometries or the trigonal planar geometries and things like that. What's going to happen is we're going to take atomic orbitals, s, p, and d orbitals, and make what are a series of hybrid orbitals. And remember, the atomic orbitals have you know their own shape. So s orbitals are spherical in shape, and p orbitals are a pair of balloons that are 90 degrees to each other, and d's are really strange shapes. And none of these orbitals have the shape of the orbitals or the molecules that we've seen so far. So there's none of these that are tetrahedral in shape, none of these are trigonal planar in shape. And so we're making completely different set of hybrid, uh, a set of orbitals. And we understand the phrase of atomic orbitals, so that's S, P, and D. And then there's the concept of hybrid. Now remember what a hybrid is. A hybrid is something that is a little bit of this, a little bit of this, and not both. So a hybrid car, a gas electric hybrid car, is a car that's not a gas car, it's not an electric car. It's a mismatch of both. That's a hybrid. So hybridization, or hybrid orbitals, are a little bit of S, a little bit of P, maybe a little bit of D, making something completely different. So let us consider for a moment the methane molecule. Carbon with four hydrogens around it. Here is our, our electronic configuration for neutral carbon by itself. We see we have two electrons in the 2s orbital and two electrons in the 2p orbital. And we know that carbon likes to have a total of eight electrons around it. And we look at these orbitals and the shape of these orbitals, we know that in methane, it's tetrahedral in geometry. And so that means carbon is sharing four electrons and each one of those electrons is being shared with another hydrogen. And so the orbitals sort of have to overlap, but as we see here, we don't have four orbitals that have one electron in it. We have one full orbital. We have two half-filled orbitals that are 90 degrees to each other. And then we have an orbital over here that's completely empty. So we look at this and we don't get a tetrahedral geometry at all. So it turns out, so we have two open orbitals that can be bonding, one full orbital that can be bonding. And what actually happens in real life is that the atom of carbon, when it's bonding, when it's bonding, the 1s orbital and the 3p orbitals combine to form four hybrid degenerate, meaning same energy orbitals. And they look kind of like this. And we call it an sp3 set of hybrid orbitals. Now notice we dropped the two just because, you know, what the end value for these orbitals, we really don't care. But now we have a set of hybrid orbitals. And these hybrid orbitals are all the same energy, hence, hence the term degenerate. They are not s's and not p's. They're hybrids of them. And they're all energetically equivalent. And it's not like this is the s and these are the three p's. Nope. This is an sp3 orbital, an sp3 orbital, an sp3 orbital, an sp3 orbital. We took one of these and three of these for a total of four, and we made four hybrid orbitals. However many orbitals we use in our construction is how many we get in our end. And now we have our four orbitals all half filled with one electron in them, all ready to go and overlap with this one overlaps with a hydrogen, the 1s orbital of hydrogen, this one overlaps with the 1s orbital of hydrogen, da 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 da. Now, of course, what is the shape of these orbitals? Well, an s orbital is spherical, and these p orbitals now you to each other. Well, we know what an sp3 set of hybrid orbitals looks like because we know the geometry of methane. We know that it's tetrahedral in geometry. Four groups of electrons, energetically equivalent, sure enough, an sp3 set of hybrid orbitals are tetrahedral in geometry. So it's a one-to-one -one correlation between sp3 hybridization and a tetrahedral electron domain geometry. And so you can sort of see the spatialness of them. Here is an sp, here's a set of p orbitals, 
and what they look like. And here is the s orbital that's centered on the same thing, which is spherical in shape. And those all combine and form something completely different. So this is what an sp3 set of hybrid orbitals looks like. Each orbital is just another orbital, so I can put two electrons in each one. And for carbon, it puts one electron in each one and overlaps them all and makes those bonds. So let's consider oxygen. Oxygen ends in 2s2, 2p4, and those orbitals are not equivalent because there's our 2s and our 2p, and we have, it looks like we have two half-filled orbitals ready to go bond, and we know that oxygen likes to have two bonds and two lone pairs, but not at 90 degrees to each other. We know that water has a molecular geometry of bent, and so its electron domain geometry is tetrahedral. It's got a tetrahedral electron domain geometry because it's got four groups of electrons on it around it. So that means its hybridization is sp3. We know this because it's tetrahedral electron domain geometry, and we know the hybridization is sp3. But our sp3 hybrid orbitals in water have two lone pairs, have two orbitals that are full and aren't being shared. And there they are. There's a lone pair there and a lone pair there, and that's totally okay. So oxygen having two bonds, two lone pairs, is an sp3 orbital set. And again, we have four degenerate orbitals. It just happens to be that two of them are full. But the electron domain geometry, tetrahedral. Nitrogen, more of the same. We've got 2s and a 2p. And we've got three half-filled p orbitals that are 90 degrees to each other, but that's not the truth. We know that in ammonia, four groups of electrons, one, two, three, four, electron domain geometry, tetrahedral, we know that it's got three bonds and one lone pair, but they have to be equivalent. And sure enough, it also has sp3 hybridization. Tetrahedral sp3 hybridization. Now, what about boron? For us to have these hybrid orbitals, it turns out you actually have to have an electron willing to, you have to have an electron to put in there. So boron only has three, three electrons. It can only make three hybrid orbitals. It's okay to make three bonds, three hybrid orbitals, and we know that boron trihydride has three energetically equivalent orbitals. And this is not tetrahedral. This is trigonal planar. So we know that the hybridization is not sp3. Even though we have, you know, 1s and 3ps, we can't make an sp3 set of hybrid orbitals because, well, that would be tetrahedral, and this ain't tetrahedral, it's trigonal planar. We need three energetically equivalent hybrid orbitals. So we'll just take one of the S's and two of the P's, and we make a set of sp2 hybrid orbitals and put one electron in each. And there's our unpolluted, unhybridized virgin, if you will, 2p orbital. One 2p orbital by itself, empty, doing nothing. And there's my three hybrid sp2 hybrid orbitals. So an sp2 set of hybrid orbitals is trigonal planar in geometry. It's a one-to-one -one correlation, electron domain geometry, trigonal planar, sp2 hybridization. So sorry, there's a visual, there's our p orbitals, and there's our s orbital again. And when we make it, we get three hybrid orbitals. There's one of them, there's another one, there's another one. And then there's one p orbital, unhybridized here, that's 90 degrees off of it. Right? So this is just our unpolluted atomic p orbital, and then three, molecular, three hybrid orbitals. Beryllium hydride, we know that beryllium hydride has two bonds, and it's linear in fashion. There's only two groups of electrons, and so we know that it is a linear electron domain geometry. Beryllium only has two electrons, and there's its electronic configuration, just ends in 2s, but it, need, it needs two equivalent orbitals, and so it makes an sp set of hybrid orbitals. So if we've got two groups of electrons around a central atom, its hybridization is simply sp. And notice that we have two unhybridized empty p orbitals, and that's, of course, totally okay. So now, picture, picture. 
So there's our P set of orbitals, our S set of orbitals, and then when we combine them, there's our hybrid orbitals. So there's one sp hybrid orbital, and then on the opposite side is the other sp hybrid orbital, and then there's one unhybridized p orbital, and then there's another unhybridized p orbital. So these are the ones that didn't do anything, didn't do anything, did something, did something. So now we can get on to the other two electron domain geometries. Phosphorus pentafluoride, you recall that the only, the exception, one of the exceptions to the octet rule was phosphorus and everybody, you know, in that row or higher. So carbon and oxygen and nitrogen could not have expanded octets and could not hold more than eight electrons. Now we can figure out why. In phosphorus, we have five, it's a trigonal bipyramidal, sorry, trigonal bipyramidal. We have five energetically equivalent hybrid orbitals, and there are five valence electrons in phosphorus. And notice where they're located. They're in the 3s and the 3p. Now, remember that when we start adding electrons to an n shell, n equal 3 in this case, the 3d sort of becomes available and nearby and doesn't take very much energy to put any stuff in it and we can start stealing from it. Nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine don't have a d orbital because their outermost electrons end in the 2s and 2p, and there is no 2d. That's why they can't have expanded octets and never have more than eight electrons around them. But phosphorus and sulfur and everybody down there on the periodic table can't. So since we've got d orbitals, we can use them to make hybrid orbitals. So if I want five energetically equivalent hybrid orbitals, I take one s, three of the p orbitals, and one d orbital, giving me five, one, two, three, four, five, energetically equivalent degenerate hybrid orbitals. And we call it an sp3d set of hybrid orbitals. Five groups of electrons, sp3d, one, one, two, three, one, makes total five. Trigonal bipyramidal in geometry, there's our structure. And you can probably see where this is going. Sulfur hexafluoride has six energetically equivalent hybrid orbitals, an octahedral geometry, it's got six valence electrons, and since it's in row three, it can have an expanded octet and hold more than eight electrons around it, and in fact, it holds 12 electrons around it, by taking all six valence electrons and making six hybrid orbitals. And with one S, three Ps, and two Ds, making a total of six hybrid orbitals. And of course, again, their orientation is octahedral in geometry. One last thing I want to mention is that just because sulfur has six valence electrons doesn't mean that its hybridization is always sp3d2. That's just sort of like the maximum number of hybrid orbitals it can make because it has six valence electrons. If you've got four valence electrons, the most hybrid orbitals you can make is four because you need to stick an electron in each hybrid orbital. So sulfur can have this hybridization, but we can also have sulfur in an sp3d set of hybrid orbitals. We can have it in an sp, we can have it in an sp2, we can have it in an sp3. It's just a question of how many electrons are you putting in. And again, you can put electrons into a hybrid orbital and have them be paired off, as in the case of oxygen in the presence or in our water molecule. But it's a one-to-one -one correlation between groups of electrons and hybridization. If you've got four groups of electrons, the hybridization is sp3. If you've got three groups of electrons around the central atom, the hybridization is sp2. If you've got five groups of electrons, your sp3d. If you've got six groups of electrons, your sp3d2. Da 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 da. Good luck.